it kind of goes in a chronological order. Like you need to have the income good first before you can start investing and saving. So let's talk about that first. I think a lot of people miss that, that the first bucket is that you need to have like a solid income and how to grow your income. Because a lot of people think that stuff is fixed. Like, oh, I'm only going to be able to make this much in my life. And then it really limits you for the rest of your life. So, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you are exactly right. Um, My editor was like, are you nuts? When I asked to put the career section first, she was like, that doesn't make any sense. The first section should always be budgeting. And I was like, no. No. (laughs) We place such an emphasis on no Starbucks for you, no (laughs) avocado toast. It's like, okay, do you know how hard it is to cut out $5,000 of discretionary expenses, you do not get to feel joy anymore. Like your Netflix, <laughs> yeah. subscri- your Netflix subscription is gone. You are not buying coffee. You don't get to buy cute clothes. It's done. Do you know how easy it is to ask for a $5,000 raise? That's certainly not unheard of. It happens all the time. Yeah. It is so much easier to yeah. spend the legwork to make more than it is to spend less. So I think the very first step is like knowing your worth and knowing what you can and can't ask for, both in the terms of cash, compensation, equity, you know, RSUs, ISOs, all of these things, and then giving people the word for word on how to do that and really back it up with quantifiable measures of success so that you hear yes more often than no. Yeah. Is this based on your own career? Like, did you use these ways to ask for raises? And, oh, really? So they're proven. They're actually trying These are true. literally things that I have said to my boss things that I have emailed my boss for context before I left BuzzFeed, my last boss. And I've, I had three amazing managers at BuzzFeed. I have only good things to say to them. My last boss in December, when we were having our meeting, you know, right before the, uh, uh, end of year reviews, I was like, you know, I think it's really important. He goes, I'm going to cut you off. I know you want money. I know you want money. And I was like, okay. He's like, I'm getting it for you. Just chill out. Just chill That's out. That's hilarious. Before okay, you even asked. Mm-hmm. He, before I even asked. Because I had set up the groundwork. And I talk about this in my book, Rich AF. But like, you can't ask in December when everybody's asking. Yeah, you can't ask like right out of nowhere, June. right? Yes. Oh, okay. I start asking in June. Nice. And I reminded him every two months that money and a promotion were important to me. And I wanted them. And if he wanted to keep me around, if he wanted me to grind and bust my butt to you know show good results, he needed to pay me. Uh. And so... When December actually rolled around, this was like two weeks before the actual final end of year review. I was like, I just want to remind you for our final end of year review, I would, and he was like, just stop talking, stop talking, (laughs) stop talking. That's amazing. That's such a great tip. It's like you, you start in June and you, you keep like following up. Where did you get the confidence to do that? (laughs) I think a lot of people, it's a confidence thing. It's a self-worth thing, right? It is, but it's also a moment of realization that you have to have. So I think I learned a lot of this, obviously, from my mentor, and I'm really fortunate to have had her. But, you know, when you're looking around, and and I'll be very frank and candid here, like, when I joined BuzzFeed, because I didn't have any media sales experience, like, I took a pay cut to go there. I was making less than a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. But I was closing more deals. And overall, I was still making a lot of money because my commissions and bonus checks were supplementing my salary, but my salary was like meaningfully less than most people. And so when I sat around at a table and I looked around and there were certainly other very, very talented people, but there were also a lot of people sitting around that like weren't carrying their weight and they were getting paid more than me. And I was like, that does not seem fair at all. Like Mm -hmm. if I am top of the leaderboard, if I, if my face is being shown in management meetings, if the CEO of the company is shouting me out on all hands meetings, you pay me like that. You pay me like I deserve it. Yeah. You earned it. You like, you knew you deserved it. it. I felt like I had earned it. So I Mm -hmm. felt really confident asking every single time. Cause I was like, you know, Mm -hmm. you and I both know to my manager, you know, you and I both know if you don't give me what I want. I'm gone. And any one of the competitors, any one of the platforms will take me. Yep. And it wasn't that I was threatening him, but I was like, just making sure he saw the amount of effort I was putting in, but also what he would be losing if I were to leave. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the preface to this for our listeners is you have to actually be delivering and working, working well in your, your job to be able to ask for a raise. <laughs> yeah. I do also mention that in the book because I think, you know, I'm not saying everyone should be entitled to one. Like if you are coming in late with a Starbucks in your hand and you're leaving early and only half of your tasks are getting done each day, odds are good. You're not getting that raise. You're not getting that promotion. You actually have to be performing. But if you're doing your job, you're not getting horrible criticism. Your boss thinks, you know, you're doing a good job. Ask. You need to be asking every year. 